and welcome to lesson number two of module five know what matters this lesson is called why are values so important now this is going to be a short lesson but an important one since as i've mentioned in order to get clear on your own values you must first know the essential qualities of values okay so here we go the first quality is that values are here and now values are here and now goals are in the future okay so in any moment you can choose to act on your values or neglect them even if you have totally neglected a core value for years or decades in this moment right now you can act on it in contrast goals are always in the future a goal is something that you're aiming for striving for working toward and the moment you achieve it it's no longer a goal because of this, people who lead a very goal-focused life often find that it leads to a sense of chronic lack or frustration. Why? Well, because they're always looking to the future and continually striving to achieve the next goal under the illusion it's going to bring lasting happiness or contentment. In the values-focused life, we still have goals, but the emphasis is on living by our values in each moment. And this approach leads to a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction as our values are always available. Think of it this way. Imagine there are two kids in the back of a car and mom's driving them to Disneyland. It's a three hour trip to get there and one kid saying every five minutes, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Mom's getting annoyed, the kid's frustrated, they're snapping at each other. It's a state of chronic tension. But the other kid's looking at the, out the window. Okay, so the second child is looking out the window, waving at the other cars, noticing with great interest all the towns and farms and factories that, they'll, that they're driving past. Now both kids reach Disneyland at the same time, and both have a great time when they get there. But only one of these children had a rewarding journey. Why? Because he wasn't just focused on the goal. He was also, he also valued exploring, traveling, learning about the world outside the car. And on the way home, the first child keeps saying, are we home yet? Are we home yet? Whereas the second child enjoys the ride by looking out the window and appreciating how everything looks so different at night. Okay, so goals versus values. Go values are here and now, goals are in the future. Values never need to be justified. Values are like our taste in ice cream, right? You don't need to justify why you like strawberry or chocolate or vanilla or whatever your favorite flavor is. Values are simply statements about what's meaningful to us. We never need to justify that. Values often need to be prioritized because all our values are available in each moment, we'll need to prioritize which we act on. So for example, we may value being loving and caring toward our parents, but if they're continually hostile and abusive to us, we may cut off all contact with them because our values around self-protection and self-nurture take priority. Oops, sorry, I skipped ahead there. Let me go back. Our values around being loving and caring haven't disappeared in this example. They've just been prioritized. Okay, our values are like a cube. In any position, some faces of the cube are clearly visible and other faces can't be seen at all. The unseen faces haven't ceased to exist. They're just not visible in this position. And whenever the cube changes position, some faces come to the foreground while others recede into the background. Okay, so values often need to be prioritized. And as you saw a second ago, values are best held lightly. So we want to be aware of our values and in contact with them, but we don't want to be fused with them. When we fuse with them, our values start to feel oppressive and restrictive, like commandments we have to obey. They turn into these rigid rules rather than flexible guides, which we want them to be. So think back to the compass metaphor. When you go on a journey, you don't want to clutch the compass tightly every step of the way. You want to carry it in your backpack, knowing that any time you need it to steer a course or find your way, you can instantly pull it out and use it. 
Okay, so values are best held lightly. And values are freely chosen. We consciously choose to bring these desired qualities to our actions. We don't have to act in this way. We choose to simply because it matters to us. Okay, so to recap, values are here and now. Values never need to be justified. Values often need to be prioritized. Values are best held lightly and values are freely chosen. Okay, so now we have a better understanding exactly what values are and we know they are very different from goals. To further explain why values are so important, let's talk about the example of Viktor Frankl. Now you may be aware that Auschwitz was the most notorious of the Nazi death camps. We can scarcely begin to imagine what took place there. The horrific abuse and torture, the extremes of human degradation, and the countless deaths through disease, violence, starvation, and the infamous gas chambers. Viktor Frankl was a Jewish psychiatrist who survived years of unspeakable horror in Auschwitz and other camps, which he described in gruesome detail in his awe-inspiring book, Man's Search for Meaning. One thing that's fascinating in his book is that and it's not maybe what you'd expect. The people who survived longest in the death camps were often not the physically fittest and strongest, but those who were connected with a purpose in life. If prisoners could connect with something they valued, a loving relationship with their child, for example, or an important book they wished to write, that connection gave them something to live for, something that made it, in, in Victor's words, worthwhile to endure all that suffering. Now, Frankel's sense of purpose came from deeply valuing his relationship with his wife. During the most painful times, he would conjure up a mental image of his wife and think about how much he loved her. He also valued helping others in the camp. He listened, gave them words of kindness, tended to the sick, and he helped people connect with their own deepest values. That was enough to keep him going. So as the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. The bottom line is that values make life worth living. All meaningful projects require effort, whether you're raising kids, renovating your house, learning to play the piano, or starting your own business. These things are challenging. Unfortunately, all too often when faced with a challenge, we think it's too hard and we give up or avoid it. That's where our values come in. Same goes with overcoming social anxiety. Connecting with our values gives us a sense that hard work is worth the effort. So for example, if we value connecting with nature, it makes it all the worth, all worthwhile you know, for the effort to organize a trip to the countryside. If we value being a loving parent, well, it's worth taking the time to play with our kids. If we value our health, we're willing to exercise on a regular basis, despite the inconvenience. Okay, if you value being social, then doing this program is worth your time and effort. In this way, values act as motivators. We may not feel like exercising, but valuing our health can give us the will to just do it, right? So values provide a powerful antidote to depression as well, because it's a way to give your life purpose, meaning, and passion, which is often missing in individuals that feel depressed. All right, so we know and understand why values are so important. In the next lesson, we are going to do a simple exercise to get you started on clarifying your values. Before we go, I just want to leave you with this quote from Man's Search for Meaning. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the, through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way.